No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood is one of those books that you can leisurely read in under three days, but spend the next three months trying to figure out what it just did to you. It's the sort of novel that traps you in a loop of emotions, bouncing between a kind of manic hilarity anxiety about the dreadful hollowness of our increasingly digital lives and the raw, contusive tenderness that comes from a profound loss. The book is haunting, sure, but it's also messy and playful and absurd, not to mention deeply, achingly personal. Lockwood is a poet known for her biting wit and the humorous, if somewhat irreverent, lens through which she perceives the modern world. And she definitely brings these qualities into her prose here, too. But there's something more happening, and no one is talking about this. It's an intense and disquieting depth of feeling that sneaks up on you somewhere among the memes and the fragments of internet speak. And by the end, it finally knocks you flat. To give a sense of the plot, though, even calling it a plot in the traditional sense feels a little bit misleading. But the novel follows an unnamed protagonist, a woman who is something of a public figure in the online world, which is often referred to as the portal. This woman is known for her quick, witty observations on the chaotic torrent of internet culture, and she seems to exist in a constant buzzing dialogue with that world. If you've spent any time on Twitter or X, I guess it's called now, I, I'm not on it anymore, you will recognize the world Lockwood is conjuring here, the constant babble of opinions, the absurd and extreme righteous outrage, the desperate attempt to make sense of global events by turning them into memes. Lockwood captures internet culture with a precision that feels like she has a direct line to the collective unconscious of the terminally online. And the first half of the novel is basically just that, a flurry of mostly disconnected fragments that sort of mimic the way we scroll through a feed. There's a strange comfort in it, even though it's a little bit alienating. It's funny. It's bizarre. It's also kind of horrifying because you start to realize how numb you are to the real world when you're immersed in this never-ending noise. The book's protagonist gets famous for one of these viral moments, a joke that's silly but clever enough to launch her into internet stardom. She spends her time traveling to events where she talks about the portal, about its culture, but it becomes clear that she's just as lost as anyone. She suffers from a sort of disconnection from meaning, and you start to wonder whether anything matters to her beyond the dopamine hits of likes and shares. And then comes the second half of the book, where there's a sharp pivot and a plot really begins to crystallize. The protagonist is confronted with the news that her sister's pregnancy has complications. The baby has a rare genetic disorder, and the protagonist's life, which was once defined by the shallow, repetitive nature of the portal, is thrown into heartbreaking disarray. The book begins to turn into something much deeper, something much more urgent. The prose becomes considerably less playful, shifting toward a painful precision as the protagonist enters into the real world where her niece's life, in all its fragility, its beauty, and its gut-wrenching brevity, commands her full attention. I think no one is talking about this is at its core about the limits of language, right? Both the 
fragmented, distracted language of the online world and the more traditional forms we use to navigate grief and love and life in the real world. Lockwood brilliantly shows how the internet's nonsensical, absurd language can be both a refuge and a prison, a way to cope with overwhelming realities by turning them into something ridiculous and distant. And she also shows how these same linguistic habits utterly fail when we are faced with real suffering. In the first half of the book, Lockwood's protagonist exists in a world where language is slippery, where irony is the default and sincerity is ridiculed and made practically impossible. People in the portal communicate in rapid fire bursts of absurdity, right? Jokes and catchphrases and memes and Lockwood's prose reflects that with its staccato sentences, its fragmented structure, and a setup and punchline-like rhythm. It's funny, sure, but it's also deceptively bleak. The absurdity feels like a defense mechanism against the crushing weight of reality, and there's a kind of desperation lurking underneath all that silliness. The protagonist drifts through this world half alive, her real emotions buried under layers and layers of performative cleverness. But when she's faced with her niece's illness, everything changes. Suddenly language becomes inadequate and completely different. The internet's glibness no longer works and even more traditional forms of communication like words of comfort, expressions of love, they start to feel hollow. The protagonist is forced to confront the raw visceral reality of grief and Lockwood's prose changes to match this. The sentences slow down and become more deliberate. The fragmentation remains, but now it reflects the protagonist's emotional state, her fractured, desperate attempt to hold on to something real in a world that feels increasingly ephemeral. This is where Lockwood's skill as a writer really shines. Her prose is beautiful throughout the novel, sometimes purposefully playful, sometimes lush and lyrical, sometimes sharp and biting. But in these moments of raw emotion, it reaches a new level altogether. She writes about grief in a way that feels both universal and intensely, uncomfortably personal. She brilliantly captures the way grief sneaks up on you, overwhelms you, and begins to alter the way you see the world. But even in the midst of this pain, Lockwood somehow manages to find some room for humor and levity, and she paints a picture of the surreal beauty of life, even in its most tragic moments. By the end of the novel, I found myself in tears, both from the beauty of Lockwood's writing and the heartbreaking tenderness of the story she tells. The resolution of the book is not a tidy one. There is no grand epiphany, no sudden understanding that makes everything better. Instead, Lockwood offers something more fragile and true, a kind of quiet acceptance of the messiness of life with all its contradictions and absurdities. The protagonist emerges from her experience changed, but not in any simple or reductive way. She's still haunted by the portal. She's still shaped by the ridiculousness of the world she lives in, but she's also found something real, something worth holding on to. No One Is Talking About This is a book that has haunted me ever since I finished it. It's about internet culture, sure, but it's also about grief and love and the strange beauty of being alive. It's a book that made me laugh out loud, made me weep inconsolably, and left me feeling just a little bit more human. In my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place No One Is Talking About This right here 
behind This Is How You Lose the Time War. It's a brilliant and beautiful meditation on grief and love, and it explores how, despite being more connected than ever in some ways, we remain deeply disconnected in others. I don't want to say that this book isn't for everybody, but I will say that I think it will perhaps resonate most with those of us who remember a time before the internet, but who, despite this fact, find ourselves more and more online nowadays. It's a book that I loved, and I will undoubtedly revisit it in the near future. If you have read No One Is Talking About This, I would love to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.